lecture number 19 uh, alternative energy resources and uh, we will be talking about the solar power today um, we would be actually discussing the uh, theoretic about our courses and obviously when the when the uh, the classes start in campus we will be talking about the the combined cycle power plant in face to face um starting with the um, industrial revolution in 18th century uh, the fossil fuel, which include the coal, petroleum, uh, the natural gas, that was the main horsepower of industrialization. Uh, that include the generation of electricity to heating and cooling of the building, from cooking to the hot water drinking, uh, from lighting and uh, many electronic um, devices. It would mean actually the, 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 the main source of that thing was the uh, energy resources from the fossil fuel. Uh, but during the last one and a half century, for say like one, uh, one and a half century, uh, around uh, the fossil fuel which was stored in, uh, in the earth uh, of the, during the mi millions of year uh, was rapidly depleted. And now the mankind is again looking for some alternative to, to these resources. Um, by alternative would mean like uh, anything which would be the alternative to the fossil fuel. Um, this alternative, the word alternative and the renewable, they are uh, interchangeably, like uh, said. Uh, although, like uh, in, in alternative resources, we, would, we can actually talk about the nuclear uh, resources or nuclear uh, fuel, but that's what actually we, could, we cannot call it as a renewable fuel as well. So alternative uh, normally are used, alternative energy resources are normally used for for the fuel, which is uh, obviously sometimes renewable as well. Um, this include the solar uh, energy, the wind energy, the hydro, the geothermal, biomass, tidal, and these, these are what we call it as the alternative energy resources. Uh, and obviously these resources are mostly, um, even that they, are, they, they have got low carbon footprint, have got uh, less higher carbon emissions, and obviously uh, that that play a little bit uh, less role in global warming. Um, by in 2000, by 2014, I would say like uh, renewable energy sources such as wind, geothermal, um, solar, biomass, and burn fuel gas. Uh, sorry, burn by uh, waste um, uh, biomass. Uh, they provided around like 19% of the total energy consumed worldwide. In these 19%. Um, the electrical share was actually in, in the renewable share was 22.8 percent most of that was coming from the hydro which was having 16.6 percent and obviously by wind which was 19 around like 3.1 percent um according to the uh rent 21 which is actually the 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 global uh report about the renewable energy um in 2017 uh this figure the total renewable figure was actually increased by 19.3% uh, for the energy in 2004 and 24.5% for the electricity in 2016. Uh, there are many places around the world with a grid that are run almostly exclusive on the renewable resources. So the question arises like uh, whether uh, we would be actually uh, or whether we, we would reach towards the 100% renewable or not. Uh, a study in Stanford University or UC Davis University uh, analyzed the, the current state of renewable technology with an eye to see if we could feasibly complete run the world with the renewable or not. The study like uh, look at the world where, where it's say like uh, almost 90% if 90% of the energy demand would be met uh, with the large scale wind and solar generation. Uh, and yes, on the uh, and the remaining ten percent would be uh, like four percent would be provided by the geothermal resource in and electro uh, uh, hydroelectric. Why two percent would be from wave and tidal, and the remainder should be from the fuel cell as well. Uh, they also foresee like the for the need of keep conventional power plant uh, system until they could be replaced with the renewable power plants. Uh, by 2030, they say like the new power plant uh, should be uh, the sources or the uh, the, the the source of the renew uh, the the new power plant should be the renewable. Uh, 
by 2050, they say like all existing power plant could be readily converted to renew renewable alternative, completely the 100% conversion plan. University of Pennsylvania generally agreed to this one and also quantified uh, some of the estimates as well, like quantifying like how we would reach towards the 100% renewable energy. Uh, so that by mean like if, if you are looking at the 100% renewable energy for the total vote, you would need around like 3.8 million large um, turbines, um, around like 90,000 utility scale power plants, uh, around 9,400 uh, sorry, uh, 4,900, uh, 490,000 of uh, tidal turbines, around 500 plus of the geothermal installation, and 900 around like uh, hydroelectric plants. Um, yes, but if that is feasible or not, um, that's, that would be a one of the question, and that's what actually they, they have studied on. Uh, but at the national level, uh, some of the nation, like around 30 of the nation, they have achieved uh, more than 20% of the uh, supply, electric supply from the renewable resources. Um, and and the, most of them, the country that use most of the renewable uh, person, uh, renewable energy is the Iceland, which actually utilize 100% of the renewable. And that means like they are actually, ha and that's because they have got abundant uh, geothermal energy that will, that is utilized in the renewable. Uh, next up is the Sweden. Uh, which actually say like they would be pushing their own uh, self for the 100% renewable and obviously they are looking at the investment which is actually under the renewable sources. Um, next close uh, to the uh, the third place was the Costa Rica which actually uh, with an impressive 99% renewable resources uh, and that was achieved in 2016 and they say like by, by 2021 they would be actually uh, looking at the 100% renewable energy. And finally, they are the fourth place, uh, Nicaragua, Nicaragua, and that is actually with 90% of the power plants or the power generation is the renewable. And obviously, that's because of their solar uh, and wind generation. Um, all these nations, obviously, if they, they say like uh, when there is a will, there is a way, obviously. So if you want to have any renewable resources or you want to have a renewable power plants, so obviously you want to invest on it. And that's what actually we are saying like that that would be one of the things which uh, would be looking for the 100% renewable world. Now, in renewable energy, one of the biggest or uh, one of the main contributor in the renewable energy is the solar energy. So according to the well-established measurement, the average power density of the solar radiation just outside the atm Earth atmosphere is around like uh, 1366. Uh, watt per square meter. That's what we call it as the outside the Earth uh, atmosphere. That's what actually we incident on the Earth atmosphere. Why do you know that the solar constant? The definition of meter is actually 10,000, one by 10, one over 10,000, uh, um, one million of the Earth's Mediterranean from the North Pole to the equator. So that by that definition, that means like the total power that would reach the Earth would be 1366 multiply by 4 by um, 4 by pi into 10 to the power 14 so that come up as 1.7 into 10 to the power 17 watts uh, if you multiply with the seconds uh, in a day every day and each year having this much of the days so the total power that would that is incident on the earth during the year is 5 4 uh, 5.46 interest about 24 joule that mean like 5460000 error joule per year uh, so how much this energy is if you're looking at the total consumption uh, in the year 2000 annual total uh, consumption in the year 2005 and 2010 so that is actually around 500 average so that mean like if we may like it was just a mere of 0.01 percent of the annual energy of the solar energy that is reaching the earth that can be set that can satisfy the need of the entire world so that means like if we can even harness 0.01 percent of the solar energy this which is which is actually incident on the earth we can actually satisfy the need of the total world so that means like if we are looking at the energy and solar energy that's quite a big contributing factor in the renewable energy resources uh, but yes the total the, the total energy uh, which is incident on the atmosphere uh, surface that does not reach inside the 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 earth surface 
So mostly around 50% of the, uh, the, the energy is reflected back. Uh, some of them is actually reflected in the cloud, cloud and atmosphere. Some is reflected by the Earth's surface. Uh, some of them is actually absorbed by the Earth. So the total actually surface, the, 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 the total energy which is reaching the Earth's surface, it is actually around like 166 watt per square meter. So that means like it is around like 0.6 percent that is not absorbed. Uh, however, if we are looking at this one, the average total solar radiation absorbed by the Earth's surface is 163.3 watt per square meter or roughly around 170 watt per square meter. So this is the total uh, energy which is actually absorbed by the, the Earth's surface. Uh, now looking at the energy perspective of the Pakistan. So Pakistan uh, has some of the highest value of insulation, uh, which we call it as incident solar radiations. Uh, it is around like 5.3 kilowatt per square meter per day with the jacket above received like 2142 kilowatt hour of solar radiation uh, per square meter per year in the world. Uh, so we have got highest value of insulation, which is 5.3 kilowatt uh, with the eight to nine hour of sunshine per day. Uh, ideally, I, I, that's what we call it as the ideal climate for the solar generation. Uh, but yes, being a solar, um, quite a good value of insulation, uh, still the technology adaptation in Pakistan is quite too slow. Uh, the country has got solar power plant in Pakistan, in Kashmir, Punjab, Sindh, and Balochistan, but obviously it's it's a uh, quite a slow process. What we have uh, seen from the last few years, uh, yes. But back in from uh, back from 2013, there there is actually quite a good number of uh, projects which was started uh, by the by the government. Uh, yes, and one of them was actually the Kaidasm Solar Park, which was in the Cholistan Desert that was actually started by two, in, by 2017. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, uh, that was supposed to start by 2017 with one gigawatt of the power. But yes, it could not reach that size. But still, what we have got is around like uh, uh, 400,000 uh, 400, panels installed in a Kaidasm Solar Park with a capacity of 100 megawatts. Um, the southern western uh, province of Balochistan and north of Sindh, if I, if I would just reach out like over here. So they have got the excellent condition for harvesting solar energy. And most of them is actually somewhere here, which is actually somewhere around Chavi, Koita, Koita, um, Kila Abdullah, Kila Sefullah. They have got quite a huge number of uh, uh, solar, uh, solar radiation over here. Uh, but even despite of the favorable condition, uh, the use of uh, solar energy uh, for the electricity generation that's quite low. Um, they have there have been like certain um, small projects uh, by Alternative Energy Development Board or the PRECREC, which is mean like Pakistan Council for Renewable Energy Technology. They have electrified. They have actually provided um, few of the projects. Uh, but most of the projects are the small scale projects and that that does not contribute to much of the, the solar energy share uh, in the Pakistan energy mix. Uh, yes, that's what we're having said that uh, being a favorable condition of solar energy, uh, Pakistan must actually invest on the solar energy technology. Uh, like, for example, uh, if I even if I would just say like um, we have got a good um, average solar insulation, which is actually 170 watt per square meter, um, which is actually what uh, what I mean to say like Pakistan have got much higher than this value. But if we if we just take the global average, which is 170 watt per square meter, these um, the surface area of Pakistan is 796 in trends for 11 square meter. Uh, so the total power, solar power that is incident on Pakistan, the, earth, the surface of the Pakistan is actually 135 terawatt. So it is 600 times the total power consumption, which is right now in Pakistan. That means like if we can actually take some of the energy out of the of the of this the, the incidence energy, or uh, if we can harness some of the, the solar energy, which is actually incident on Pakistan, so we can actually 
solve many of the our electricity problem or what we call it as a power consumption problem uh, now we have already introduced what's the use of the solar energy what what would be required for the world and what would be required for pakistan let's talk about the solar energy itself what are the solar energy system we have we, we we are talking about so mainly there are two different kind two two uh, two main type of the solar energy system one is solar thermal and one is photovoltaic um solar thermal uh in solar thermal we are uh, we are looking at the direct heating, cooking, drying, power generation, while for photovoltaic, which we normally call as, as a PV technology, they are actually used for the electricity generation. Um, this is what actually a little bit chart for the, for the uh, solar energy utilization. So solar energy, if I'm still looking for the direct solar energy, they are utilized in two different forms. One is active utilization and one is passive utilization. Uh, the passive utilization and normally a problem say like uh, thermal and illuminative actually they are mostly in building and architecture they are utilized in building and architecture that for having said like like uh, if i would say like in winter in winter time uh, if your window uh, your glass window is facing towards the the sun so that means like it will be heating your your uh, your room and in the in the summer time if it obviously uh, facing away from that one so that mean like it would be actually a little bit cooled down uh, so that mean like it's a else else a little bit uh, what we call it as a passive technology uh, while for the active technology we have got the solar thermal uh, photo photochemical and photovoltaic that's what actually we have so much of them um, even uh, um, even uh, all these three have got two two different now uh, um, uh, two different uh, subsystem which we call it as a an unconcentrated system and concentrated system um, whether we are actually concentrating the um, incident solar radiation on a on a surface or we are not concentrated so the, this is what actually we have got so the unconcentrated one we have got the uh, solar thermal power station we have got cooking we have got energy system solar pound electric thermal electric processes for the concentrated one we have got concentrated solar power and chemical coercion uh, for photochemical artificial photosynthesis and so on so, uh, so forth for the photovoltaic we have got conventional for uh, conventional photo which is unconcentrated pv cell and we have got concentrated pv cell so this is what we call it as the the utilization of or utilization of solar energy or we call it as a solar energy systems um, in this lecture we will be talking about few of them so let's start with the solar thermal so solar thermal energy is a form of energy and technology for harnessing solar energy to generate solar thermal energy or electric energy for use in industry or in a residential or commercial sector uh, the first installation of solar thermal energy was actually uh, it's a hard doesn't approximately around like uh, that was around like uh, 1910 or 1912 somewhere uh, when a steam engine was run on a steam produced by sunlight uh, because at that time the the fuel was cheap there was a abundantly coal available the the hydrocarbon was cheap so that mean like it was not actually yeah, so uh, convenient to, to to run that one but only uh, after a few decades say probably in 1970s it was revisited and obviously the utilization of solar energy was quite actually possible solar thermal uh, can be utilized uh, both in active and passive wise that's what actually we we have said uh, including concentrated and non-concentrated system that's what we have discussed Solar water heating. Solar water heating is a heating of water by sunlight using solar thermal collector. So there are a variety of different configuration available uh, that should be cost effective and that should provide solution to different climate and latitude. Um, solar water heating that uh, they are used both for residential purposes and industrial application as well. Uh, so that means uh, what is actually a solar water heating or what actually we do in a solar collector, thermal collector. So the sun facing collector, so if we have got a sun over here, so the sun facing collector has a working fluid that passes into a storage um, for a later use. So let's say we have got a solar storage over here, temperature controller and storage somewhere. So we have, uh, sorry, uh, uh, so, sorry, over here. So we have got a storage solar, uh, solar water tank. Uh, that could be used for the uh, storage of the water 
uh, solar water heater can be active. Uh, that means like it should be, it can be pumped. Uh, that can be passive, and that means like it should be conventional uh, They use water only or water plus uh, some working fluid. Uh, they are they can be directly heated or light concentrated mirror. Uh, they can be independent or hybrid with electrical heater. In a large installation mirror or what you call is that a reflector as well may concentrate solar solar sunlight into a small collector. Uh, as of uh, 2078, global solar uh, hot water uh, thermal capacity. Uh, Thermal capacity is 472 gigawatt and our market is uh, mainly dominated by China, United States and Turkey. Uh, Barbados like uh, uh, Austria, Cyprus, Israel and Greece are the leading country by capacity uh, per uh, person, which means like they are utilizing the, the uh, solar hot water too much. Uh, what actually they do, uh, what is actually solar water heater look like? With tubes which are connected to the pressurized tank. Uh, the cold water is in the, uh, we have got the inlet of the cold water in the pressurized tank, which is actually going down into the, the glass tubes and recirculated uh, by, uh, recirculated into the evacuated tube by absorbing heat into the black collector. Uh, when the water is actually hot, it is actually drained out from the hot water outlet. Uh, we have got a double uh, pan glass as well to trap energy, which is actually radiated from the glass. Um, if you are looking at the um, flat panel efficiency, uh, the transmission that would be through glasses would be 85%. Uh, absorption by black sheet is 95%. Radioactive loss is actually 30%. Convection and conduction loss is 20 so if you look at the total efficiency of this one, uh, we have got 55% uh, of the total efficiency of this, this uh, flat panel uh, water heater. Uh, but still, as we are saying, like the, there is a solar energy and obviously solar energy is quite uh, free. So 55% efficiency is quite a good efficiency. Uh, there are like some interesting facts around about the, this, these uh, uh, solar water heater as well. Like in early 1980s, uh, there was high uh, oil prices in the United States. Uh, so obviously they offer tax credit for the installation of solar panel. Uh, so they were normally essentially free for them. Uh, many units were installed until it, uh, the program was dropped in the 1985. Uh, but most of them was actually uh, used to heat the swimming pools. Uh, so that was the case of the United States. But other part of the world, as we have discussed, like uh, there are some leading in, uh, countries uh, in the world in solar water heating. So 95% of the Cy uh, home in Cyprus, um, uh, so, sorry for the spelling. So 95% uh, home of the Cyprus are actually um, having our solar water heating, uh, while 65% of the home in Israel, they are having the solar water heating. The next in line is actually uh, the solar cooker. Uh, solar cooker is a device which uses the energy of the direct sunlight to heat uh, and cook or pressurize drink and other food material. Uh, many solar cooker currently used are relatively inexpensive, low techn technology devices, uh, although some are powerful and expensive like tradition one, but most of them are actually used by the, the uh, what we call it as the uh, not so developed countries, uh, mostly in, in India and other parts. Uh, the cooking time depends primarily on the equipment being used or the amount of sunlight at that particular time uh, and the quantity of food that need to be cooked. Uh, air temperature, wind and latitude also affect the performance. There are several types of the cook, uh, solar cooker. The main are uh, like the, these four types. This is one of the solar panel, uh, sorry, the, the panel solar cooker. Uh, you can imagine there are so, uh, some panel, reflective panels over here. Uh, the solar, uh, the panel solar cooker use reflective panels to focus sunlight on the pot, which is actually placed inside, uh, in between the, the cooker. Uh, these work best in tropical climate or in the warmer month when wind and heat losses are uh, not so much. Uh, and in, in inexpensive um, aluminized uh, cardboard normally are used, uh, which actually can take up uh, like temperature to around like 
450 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, th this is plenty since food normally starts uh, around like 180 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, normally, the if, if you are using the aluminium foil uh, solar cooker, uh, it gets a little bit after a few weeks, it gets uh, oxidized and turn black. So you have to replace that uh, aluminium foil back. But obviously, they are so cheap um, in many places that this is normally one of them, like uh, uh, quite a low end solution to a uh, cooking. Then we have got uh, same kind of a thing, which we call it as a box solar cooker. Uh, the box cooker has a transparent glass or a plastic top, and it may have traditional uh, additional reflectors, what we call it as a reflector. Somewhere here, if we install another. Uh, uh, reflecting material so it will be a reflecting the sunlight back into this one so that means like we have got another additional reflector uh, to concentrate the sunlight into the box the top can usually be removed to allow the dark part uh, containing food to be placed inside um, normally like the solar box cooker typically reach temperature of around like 150 degrees centigrade or 300 degree Fahrenheit. Uh, that's definitely not uh, as hot as the the normal uh, oven, but obviously it's quite enough uh, hot enough to cook food uh, if if you are looking at the uh, longer time. So this is what we call it as a so uh, box uh, type of solar cooker. Then we have got a parabolic reflected solar cooker. Normally these are the large uh, solar cookers, and obviously these are the what we call it that the high end or the high tech solar cooker when this point is uh, so, so we have got a parabolic solar cooker concentrated sunlight to a single point uh, so we have got parabolic dish and which is actually reflecting sunlight uh, on a single point we call it a focal point uh, when this point is focused on a bottom of the pot it can heat the pot quickly uh, to very high temperature uh, which can often be comparable to temperature achieved in a gas or charcoal grill these type of solar cooker are widely used in a several region like in China, India, with hundreds of thousands of families currently use parabolic solar cooker for the preparing the food and heating water. Uh, normally in the northern India, they are, that's quite common actually. The advantage are speed and potential to cook uh, when, it cool, when it's cold outside. Um, it's still when it's still cold outside. The disadvantages are, are the safety concern because it's reflecting the light to a focus on the single point. So obviously it's a little bit not so so good for the eyes and the children uh, and obviously you need to stir uh, the content uh, just like a normal pot uh, because it will be actually sticking to the uh, stove top uh, temperature yes obviously it can reach up to 400 degrees centigrade sorry 400 degrees Fahrenheit uh, the parabolic cooker might also need adjustment to obviously to face towards the sun the next, which is actually the Dune technology, is the vacuum tube uh, solar cooker. Um, obviously, the evacuated solar cooker uh, are essentially a vacuum seal between the two layers of glass. So, obviously, we have got a glass, uh, and inside that glass, we have got a vacuum uh, over here. The vacuum allows the tube to act both as a super greenhouses and an insulator. The central cooking tube is made from the borosilicate glass which is resistant to a thermal shock and has a vacuum beneath the, the surface to insulate the interior the inside of the tube is lined with the copper stainless steel and aluminium nitride to better absorb and conduct heat from the sun rays the vacuum effect helps to hold the heat and obviously internal temperature can reach up to 55 degree Fahrenheit as hot as obviously the gas power grid this is all about like the uh, solar uh, heating and solar cooking uh, we would be actually continuing with this our solar uh, solar uh, power in the next lecture as well